Hello and welcome to What's Going On Anyway, where I use the I Ching to call into the invisible divine. And I'll use other things like angel cards and some of my favorite divination cards to find some answers as we call into two week segments of time. And I start with the I Ching. What I did is sat with the question of what is the best thing for all of us to keep in mind as we go through this next two week cycle until we run into the new moon and then I will ask again. So I'm asking for guidance, support and direction for these next two weeks. And here we are, this is a full Leo moon and um, I love to listen to what astrologers have to say about this and um, pay attention to what other thinkers and feelers and friends are feeling about this particular time. And I've um, gathered my information from my own feelers and my own thinkings. And I loved the idea of having a slow January and that was really true for me. My January was slow. Things are starting to pick up a little bit here and I'm feeling more direction and focus. I feel like things are working out for me. I can make plans and follow through with them. People are calling me, things are happening. Um, and I don't mean people are calling me. I mean, um, opportunities are showing up. When I say people are calling me, there's like these certain kinds of opportunities that just didn't seem to um, make sense before now. So um, I threw the I Ching with that question in mind. What can we focus on? What is different now? And what is the best thing to keep in mind right now for these two weeks? And as I threw the reading, I had this sensation in my body and it went from the middle back of my chest, so right behind my heart, and uh, almost like wings opening and then enveloping in front. I could feel a sensation coming down my arms to the backs of my hands. And I was asking the question for more than just me, for us. And the response that I got, or the hexagram that I got, and you know, I know not everybody is familiar with the I Ching and this probably isn't the right moment to explain the I Ching or how it works. Um, but what you can know if you're not familiar with it at all is that there are 64 possible hexagrams with six changing line for each hexagram that you could possibly get. And they're meant to take you through um, every possible situation that you could encounter as you travel through human existence. I, I can't speak to more than that. That's maybe it's through a kind of beingness or transformation that happens, but this is specifically for humans, I believe. And it's an ancient Chinese um, practice. And maybe there's more to go into with that, but I'm going to stick here with the changing lines that I got. So we got hexagram 43, which is deciding. And the questions around this are, what do you stand for? How do you define yourself? What belongs in your realm? And where do you need to make a clean break? And I know for myself and the folks that I've been in more intimate discussions with lately, there's this real strong feeling around boundaries. And gosh, we've been talking about boundaries for years, but there's a real sense of the benevolence of boundaries or how boundaries actually are our, our guidance system and part of what makes 
life feel even more like living. So I've had this sort of wounding pattern of trying to discover and find my own worthiness outside of an external authority. And when I listen to my boundaries, my inner guidance system, and I give myself space and I say no th to things or questions or, or um, oh, invitations, and I say no when I know it's a no, then my body rejoices. I can feel it. There's a rejoicing. I often feel guilty at the same time, but right alongside of that is this, oh, it's like a very young part of myself that is jumping up and down, being like, she showed up for me. She is listening to me. She's taking care of me. And so it's a real kind of inner parenting that goes along with boundaries for me. And when I think about what belongs in my realm and where do I need to make a clean break, well, I, it almost feels like I can absolutely no longer do things that are outside of my internal yes. So one of my favorite um, interpreters of the I Ching is Hilary Barrett. And this is what she writes about this hexagram. The old Chinese character for deciding shows a hand holding up a token, asserting your identity and right to be heard, even in the king's chambers. This is where decision begins at the very center of power. That center might be inside your own mind and yet still not feel safe. Declaring the truth loud and clear is dangerous. It stirs up old ghosts, inner and outer. Yet better this than ignoring and neglecting them. As the message of the decision spreads out from the center, it is fruitless to take up arms. This is a time to communicate, not fight. It will serve you better to focus with clear intention on what you're moving towards rather than what you're reacting against. The way I understand this is in terms of how boundaries will bring up old uh, wounding patterns. So when I say, I want time to myself now, to my family, to my partner, my um, fear of abandonment that if I say what I need then everyone else will retreat and abandon me comes up and for me that's the stirring up of the old ghosts inner and outer and what this hexagram is pointing to is saying that declaring the truth loud and clear yes it is dangerous it will bring up old patterns that are scary and difficult, but this is better than ignoring and neglecting them. And the time has come that this message from the center, that we make a decision, it comes from the center, we don't fight against that. And that now we communicate. Now is the time to speak our truth. I've heard that for years, speaking your truth, but now is the time to speak the truth from inside to outside. It's a kind of involution that I've been thinking for a long time in terms of yoga and my own spiritual practice of needing to flip things over from the way I felt safe in being a uh, person in the world, being good, right? That's something that I wrote down actually today. I don't want to be good I want to be free and this is me being free of old patterns that are keeping me into a particular tight stuck position that doesn't allow my deepest truth and even just my pure self-expression to be released so that's that first hexagram. So mm, maybe these two weeks are um, figuring out what do I stand for? How do I define myself? What belongs? What needs to go? So this is something, a process that I feel like I've been 
um, in since 2018, maybe sooner, maybe, maybe my whole life. <laughs> um, but I do feel this sense of for the first time, I am stating boundaries, using them in my family relationships, in my professional relationships, and I am standing up for something inside of me that I haven't been willing to do before. So that feels positive to me. So we've got this deciding, defining myself because of the boundaries that I am using. So my boundaries are defining me. And this hexagram moves to another one. It has changing line two. It says alarmed, calling out, evening and night, bearing arms, do not fear. And I think, I really do need to look that one up, but I think that one has to do with, this is feeling like um, having to be vigilant with these decisions that are made, but do not fear. So there's a vigilance and no fear. And this hexagram moves to hexagram 49, which is radical change. And when it moves to a new hexagram, this is sort of the future that we are being promised. So this isn't necessarily what we're going to see in these two weeks, but it moves us in the direction of radical change. And the questions are, how can you break the mold? How must the form change to express the essence? So how must the form change to express the essence? And that leads me right to the question of how are the ways in which I do things, the patterns, the old standards. Um, I used to think I had to work and work and work and be selfless and do for others and then I would be allowed to have a little slice of that freedom and that um, entitlement. I couldn't find that within myself. I was seeking for an outer authority to say, okay, it's your turn now. And it kept not being my turn. And so now I'm wondering, how does this form change to express the essence? How do I find my inner authority, make friends with it, make agreements with it, so that there's a kind of outer form changing that's allowing my self-expression to come uh, to the surface. So my self-expression is very rich inside of myself. And when I am feeling tasked to bring it to the outside, I get all kinds of uh, ways of preventing that. It's like a stuttering. It's not that I'm physically stuttering. It's like my, my energy stutters and holds back and yes, no, yes, no. And I, I get nervous about trying new things. And meanwhile, the inside of me has multitudes of ideas and possibilities. And I'm so excited about all of these things, but my avenues for self-expression have been so limited by my own fear. So now I'm wondering, how is this mold breaking? How is there going to be a radical change that allows a kind of truth and confidence to come out of me that is integral to me. Um, and then I'm going to read you from Hillary Barrett what sh she writes, her interpretation of radical change. It is time for transformation. The old Chinese character for radical change, which also means leather, shows an animal hide. This is change like a shaman's, putting on a new skin to change your identity. And it is also revolutionary change. This hexagram marks the day when the Zhu people, Zhu or Zhao people and their allies marched out to meet the armies of the corrupt Shang dynasty and defeat them. You change the governing principle and bring about renewal. So now this, this is me aside, does this mean that there will that we will actually see radical change on the outside? Can we bring radical change on the inside? Can I confront this need in me to rely on an outer authority 
and bring about a kind of radical change where I'm relying on my own authority and interacting with the world based on that inner sovereignty. Okay, now back to her interpretation. In the moment of change, there is truth, sincerity, and a sure knowledge. Then the power of the whole unfolding creative process from the source, source through to fruition and fulfillment can enter here and change the world. Naturally, regrets vanish along with the past to which they belong. The new time is coming. Haven't we heard that? The new age, the new time, the new earth. Um, I feel like we've heard that a lot. And of course, we have heard that a lot. But maybe it really is here. I'm utterly and eternally optimistic. I'm embracing my Pollyanna attitude. And we will see. So in these next two weeks, how will it be curious to notice the ways in which boundaries are insisting on an inner authority and creating the kind of spaciousness that allows for radical change. I find this very exciting. So in addition to doing to throwing the I Ching, I pulled some, I have both angel cards and these yoga cards and I keep them in a bowl together. And so I pulled out a handful of them and this is, I haven't flipped them over until this very moment. We've got truth, devotion, bhakti, blessedness. Blessedness is danyata and compassion. Truth, devotion, blessedness, compassion. I need all of that as I work with my boundaries. And here I am sending you strength to deal with your own knowingness and your own sovereignty, your inner authority to make the decisions that you need to make. And I will be back with the new moon reading and we'll see what's changed between now and then. But before we go, I did look up line two of that first hexagram and it said, do not fear alarm, calling out, evening and night, bearing arms, do not fear. And I want to read to you what Hillary Barrett interpreted that as because it sounds important to me. Now the call to change has come. It's more important than ever to carry your message or charge well. Yet impossible to know what the change may bring. So you are far from confident about responding to the call and peer out into the dark, constantly on guard against all possible threats. But because you are alert, you need not be afraid. So I think sometimes the changing lines really point the hexagram to a particular way of thinking about it. So this idea of the call to change has come. It's really important to carry your message it's impossible to know what change may come of it. Um, so you're afraid. No, are you afraid? I don't know. It's not the fear. It's that sense of unknown. It feels like everything could possibly be a threat. But the I Ching is advising us to be alert, not afraid. And lastly, I did pull some cards. This one, these cards happen to be soul oracle cards by Sonia Choquette. And I just grabbed a handful. As many, I usually grab as many as it feels right for me to grab, and this was six of them. So it starts with express your joy, be decisive, which that goes along um, with the 
first hexagram that we got, which is deciding. Claim your art, be creative, revive the dormant, and build on solid ground. So I think all of those are really lovely to go along with the I Ching reading for this full. I know the moon was in Leo, but the February moon is called the snow moon. So the full snow moon for us. And I will be back in a couple of weeks with the new moon and we will see what's in store. So goodbye for now. I'll see you soon. Patricia, are you aware of what's happening? No, ma'am, I don't know what's going on, but I'm awake.